one of the freshest, tastiest, easiest ways to get dinner on the table during the work week is to stir fry. I'm happy to be sharing the kitchen today with Grace Young, a buddy, award-winning author, and authority on the subject. You're in for a real treat because Grace is going to share two of her all-time favorite stir fries. Of course, a wok is key and she'll give us a little lesson on the proper way to season one. We'll make her Chinese Burmese chili chicken, spicy just the way I like it. And later, for vegetarians and stir-fry fans in general, peppery vegetarian rice with an egg pancake for protein. It's the original meal in a pan. It's stir-fry today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Funding provided by Subaru builds vehicles like the versatile Subaru Forester with symmetrical all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo room. A recipe made for whatever the day brings. Subaru, a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Family owned and Indiana grown, Maple Leaf Farms is a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Providing a variety of duck products for home kitchens, Maple Leaf Farms Duck helps inspire culinary adventures everywhere. Maple Leaf Farms. Ezra's Feta Cheese, family made for more than a century. Hi, I'm Sarah Moulton. Welcome to Sarah's Weeknight Meals. You know, I am so excited to learn about the proper use of a wok and stir frying because there's no better way to get dinner on the table during the work week. And I have an expert. This is the stir fry queen, Grace Young. Thank Hi, you for being here. Oh. I'll have to give you a hug. Okay, so we're going to start at the basics, 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 right? Yes. Here. Oh my gosh. There we, Here go. we go. We got it. This is a brand new carbon steel wok, and you must scrub this thing with a stainless steel scrubber and liquid dishwashing soap for a good 10 or 15 minutes. Wow. There's a factory coating that has to be removed, and if it isn't, it's not good for cooking. Okay. After you've washed it and rinsed it, never dry it with towels. You must dry it on the stove, because if you dry it with towels, some of the moisture might not be completely gone. Yeah. So to season the wok, what mm -hmm. we're going to do is, well, do you want to slice some scallions sure. and I'll slice this ginger? Sure. sure. Just a whole bunch of scallions just into two inch pieces. Two inch lengths. So the scallions and ginger, the Chinese say, actually clean the wok. And Interesting. The, the ginger doesn't have to be peeled, just very rough slices, half cup. Mm -hmm. Wow. And as this wok is heating, sometimes, of course not today, the bottom of the wok actually turns yellow. Sometimes it's orange, sometimes it's blue, black. But this wok, every wok is like a human being. They all have different personalities, and this one is not turning any color at all. So should we give this one a name? You know, my wok that I brought for you today is called Wonder Boy. So maybe we should call this one... How about we name it after the resident dog, Tilly? Yes. Let's call it Tilly. Yes. Which makes it a girl. All right. What we need to do is preheat the wok. You want to preheat to prevent sticking. Yeah. So now we're going to add two tablespoons of oil. Okay. Swirl it in. Mm -hmm. And then you can add your scallions uh -huh. and the ginger. And you want that sizzle sound. Now, whenever you stir fry, you always want to be stir frying on high heat. Mm -hmm. And for this, we want medium heat. Okay, in the beginning. And we're just going to stir fry this mixture for 20 minutes. This is called wok bonding. And as the mixture starts to soften, then we'll gradually smear it along the edge of the wok mm -hmm. so that the entire inside surface is completely coated by this oily scallion ginger mixture. Okay. And each time you cook, the fat will infuse into the metal. And then with time, this actually becomes natural nonstick. After 20 minutes, what happens? You take it off. You cool I'll it. I'll go park it over there. Yes, you remove all the scallions and ginger, and then you'll oh, you wash toss it. Them out. You'll wash it in hot water, mm -hmm. rinse it with just a sponge. Okay. And then heat it on the stove again because you never want to dry it with a towel. Dry it with a towel. Okay, I'm going to keep remembering that because it will rust. Yes. I decided one day that a lot of Chinese culinary traditions were at risk of being lost. So that prompted me to go home and cook with my parents, and they're very, very traditional. 
but I really want to re record these old-fashioned recipes. And in the process of doing that, I found out a lot about my own family's history that my parents would never have talked about if we hadn't cooked together. Tell me what we're making. We're making Chinese Burmese chili chicken. Okay, let me get the chicken out. Okay. So we are using how much chicken? This is one pound of skinless, boneless chicken thighs that mm -hmm. have been cut into half inch thick slices. And we need one teaspoon of cornstarch. I will do that. So we're seasoning the chicken. Yes, so we're marinating is, it. Okay. And this is like a chicken with a lot of vegetables. Right. Okay, so Nice and healthy. I'm adding a tablespoon of oil. Mm -hmm. This can be peanut veg or vegetable oil, canola, grapeseed. I whenever love grapeseed. Whenever That's my you favorite. stir fry, you mm -hmm. want to use an oil that has a high smoking point. Good point, because we're cooking over very high heat. Right. Okay, and then you need a little bit of salt. Half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. And half a teaspoon of pepper. Okay. There we go. And that's all that goes in the seasoning. That's and all. And why the cornstarch now? I always think of it as a, as a thickener at the end. Why were you adding right. it now? Because it helps it to brown and caramelizes it and it actually tenderizes the chicken. Well, that's great. Yeah. So this is two teaspoons of paprika. One. And this is one teaspoon of ground cumin. Mm -hmm. So Cumin, that's interesting. This dish is Chinese Burmese, as I mentioned mm -hmm. to you, and this is a half teaspoon of paprika, which we'll use you later. You mean of, of chili. I'm sorry, chili I powder. I could tell by the color it was. I like that, so it's going to be spicy. Yes. Okay, you want me to chop up the uh, these guys? Yes. Oh, and actually, I should mince the the ginger. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest way to peel ginger is using a teaspoon. You see, there's no flesh that's removed. Just You're, the peel. It's, it's the least wasteful way to do it. Yes. I'm just going to make a very thin slice and then rest it on that flat side so it's safer. Yeah, the, always. I always say that. To make sure you're not chasing your rolling item, your round item. Then make paper thin slices, mm -hmm. and then cut the paper thin slices into the fine julienne. Mm -hmm. So, easy, right? And we've already minced, uh, is it two teaspoons of, of garlic, garlic here? Yes, two teaspoons so of garlic. So, I just want to point out, this is to it's totally different than the way I cook at home. I mean unless I'm cooking Chinese or Asian, we're gonna get every last little thing measured before we start. If you don't, you will have a disaster. Okay, so tell me, um, you want me to cut up the onion into how many pieces? Um, just quarter it mm -hmm. and then cut it into like three quarter inch chunks. Okay. And these peppers I'm cutting into roughly one inch chunks. Okay. Now, tell me while we're doing this, why Burmese? What's Burmese about this? So, um, I learned this recipe from this wonderful home cook named Irene Kin Wong. Mm -hmm. She was born and raised in Burma, and the Chinese Burmese, really, the stir fries have a combination of Chinese, Indian, and Burmese influences. So the spices that we're using, the paprika and the cumin. Yeah, that took me by surprise. It took me by surprise, mm -hmm. too. Um, those are Indian, and they're wonderful in this dish because they add these lush flavors that really complement the chilies that we'll be using and also the chicken. Okay. All right, so we're lining up all of our suspects here. Yes, this is the Anaheim chili. It's a very mild chili. All right. Okay. So we're ready to stir fry. I'm getting your uh, my wok. Yes, I am. And uh, this is Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. All right. And we want it on high. Yes. All right. There we go. And oh, we forgot to combine the oh, water. We need and a little cornstarch. Starch. How much cornstarch do we Half need? Half a teaspoon. Okay. Yeah. See what I mean? This is so not how I cook, <laughs> but it's so how you must cook because you're going to see. Everything just spends like 10 seconds. So I'm going to be your assistant and yes. pass the scalpel. So to test the walk, we just put in a drop. Woo! We're ready? Okay, we're okay. ready. Okay. So I'm going to swirl in the oil. Okay. Always swirl it in and then tilt the walk so that it's nicely spread throughout. And if you could give me the onions. Okay, the onions. Here come the onions. Put them in? Yep. In the middle? Yes. Okay, I know it matters where you put things. And you hear that sizzle? Whenever you're stir frying, your wok is talking to you. If there's no sizzle, then the oil wasn't heated enough. So you stir fry this just 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 
And then you spread the onions to the side of the wok mm -hmm. and add the chicken and spread that in one even layer. So I just let that go for about a minute. Okay, quickly, flat bottoms versus round bottom wok. So the round bottom wok is the traditional wok, but it wasn't intended for a Western stove. It's intended to be in a hearth stove in a hole. Oh. So it's set in, bathed in flames. Okay. So when you set it on an American stove, you have to put it on a wok ring. And the moment you put it on a wok ring, it's, it's too removed from the heat. heat. Okay. So let's just check the bottom of this chicken to see if it's browning. I think we can start okay, to stir fry. Good. Tell me what's next. So what's now you see this nice that's browning. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we do this for just 30 seconds until the chicken turns opaque. And so we're using the stir fry technique, which is a scooping under and tossing. You want that metal spatula, never a wooden spatula, because you want the thin metal that can get underneath. And now we want the paprika and the ginger and the garlic. Does this all go in at the same time? Yes. Okay. If you don't so, mind. Okay. Just sprinkle Two it in. Two-handed. Yes. Woo! Okay. And we just want to incorporate that. Ooh, I'm oh, I'm smelling it. Isn't I, that this fabulous? is so wonderful. Wow. And that's now the red bell peppers and the green. Okay. And I'm turning the temperature down to medium. Okay. So for traditional stir fries, 99% of the time you're stir frying on high heat. Right. So this is very unusual that for two minutes, Irene wants us to use medium heat. But you're doing what she says. I'm doing what she says. Oh, the color is fantastic. I bet that's from the paprika. And now I think we can add this? the zucchini, yep, and the Anaheim chilies. Okay. And two tablespoons of the fish sauce. Swirl it, yep. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have done that. That's okay. I'm, I, you know. I try to swirl it in because that doesn't cool down the wok. Okay. And there's a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, because we've got the fish sauce. Okay. And I like to sprinkle it in. Okay. I'm learning. I know, isn't that funny? That's just a quarter of a teaspoon and it looks like so much. That's the thing with kosher salt. It's creating some juices under there from the vegetables. Right. Now, if you don't want your stir fry to be too spicy, you could use less of the Anaheim chili right. or you could cut it in half and remove the seeds. Okay. And now I'm gonna increase the heat to high. And if you could re-stir that cornstarch mixture, because right. the cornstarch always settles to the bottom of the right. dish. Right, okay, do I now, swirl this? Yeah, always along the edge, because when you pour it down the center, you cool down the wok. You cool down the wok, and we want to keep that constant temperature. Beautiful. Yep. All right, here's another question. These are all loaded questions. Yes, yes. Why not just use a skillet? Um, you don't want to use a skillet because, as one chef said to me, each time you scoop up the ingredients in a skillet, you're chasing the ingredients. You're just pushing it to the other side of the pan. Whereas here, the stir fry motion, each time the ingredients go back down into the hot well of the wok, and it cooks more evenly. Well, the point is, with a wok, it's not just the bottom that's hot. It goes all the way, way up, up the side. side. So every part of this inside is a cooking surface. And so you see now the sauce has just started to thicken. We're done. Oh, That's okay. it. And now we're just going to sprinkle And we in. finish it with chili. Yes. Very interesting. If you don't use chili powder, you could use a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Okay. More heat. Interesting. And that's it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And we've got some rice. Beautiful. Which of course is the perfect accompaniment. And I have to ask you a question. Can you show us the spatula that you've got there? Yes. That's not normal. That's like my, what I would use. Yes. So this is the classic Chinese spatula. Mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful because it has the rounded lip, which fits the curve of the wok. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a little bit more shovel-like in its shape, so it can ha hold more food. But the problem yes. is, these days, it's impossible to find a really good one. I found that one in Hong Kong years ago. So I find this Western spatula is great. Wow, this is so exciting. So this is our Chinese Burmese chili chicken. chicken. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Courtesy of Irene. Kin Wan. Okay, thanks Irene. When I was 13 years old, I saw Julia Child on TV. I I'm Julia Child. Welcome to the French Chef. And I was fascinated. I had never, ever had anything but Cantonese food. And so I would send away for her recipes, and it just launched me in my whole food career. Mm. 
Woo! Because of this cookbook, Wisdom of the Chinese Kitchen, I got to meet Julia again. Welcome back. I'm so excited because we're into wok madness, stir fry happiness today with my friend Grace Young, the expert on stir frying. And it's such a perfect weeknight meal. Yay! So what are we making now? Today we're making the peppery vegetarian fried rice. So we're making brown rice. Yes. I've just been rinsing this. I poured off all the water. Why did you rinse it? You have um, to understand I'm rice impaired. Most Asians rinse rice, and I think that's because when rice is harvested, it sits out on mats and can get really dusty. Western nutritionists say you're never supposed to do it because you wash away the nutrients, but I think that's why the rice is never gummy. Okay, so you've rinsed it and washed it until the water runs clear, and now what happens? Well, this is one cup of long grain brown mm -hmm. rice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add two cups of cold water. <laughs> and then um, you just bring this to a boil on high heat, mm -hmm. and then reduce the temperature to about medium and let it boil for about 10 minutes or so until all the water has evaporated. Really? That's you really have to monitor it. Mm -hmm. Then you want to cover it, set it on low heat, and let it cook for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and then turn off the heat and just let it set for five just minutes. Set. Okay. Yeah, that's it's very good. simple. We'll have that whole procedure on the website, so don't worry. And Maybe you become unrice impaired like me. And after you cook it, you must fluff it before you refrigerate it. And we're going to refrigerate it. Yes. Now, that's interesting. Why are we refrigerating it? Well, that's... I, I'll the, get it. We, I guess we got it in here, yeah? The key to fried rice is you have to cook it the day before. If you try to fry rice that has just been cooked, it's too hot and moist, and it's going to be sticky and gummy. So the next day, uh, it gets sort of dried out. Is that yes. It? And that's, that's so funny, dried out rice. You would never think that would be a plus. I always cook extra so that I have extra rice so I can make fried rice. Oh, I like that idea. I am going to do ginger the way you just did it. Thank you. I think I need about two tablespoons. Yes. So. And I'm going to slice these shiitake mushrooms into quarter inch dice. But the beauty of this recipe is you can change up the vegetables. I actually sort of clean out my uh, refrigerator when I make fried rice. How often do you make it? Well, at least once or twice a week. It's my really? go-to meal. Sometimes I'm working and I've just lost track of time. And my husband comes through the door, oh, and no, I know. Oh, the husband's home, and he's hungry. Yeah, oh, and I rat. know if I have cold rice in the refrigerator, I can get the meal on the table in 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah. Wow. So it doesn't have to be vegetarian. You could actually add some roast chicken at the end, or if you had some diced ham. I was going to say, I always reach for pork. And then there's a half a cup of chopped scallions. So I love fried rice because it's so healthy. Well, especially if you start with brown rice. Yeah. Could you use other grains like farro or wheat berries? I've actually done fabulous fried rice light dishes with bulgur, oh. couscous. Yeah. Once you understand this concept, you can you play can around. It. You can use it with any. And then we have one quarter inch diced carrots, about a cup. you line it all up by the stove in the order? I do. Okay, so we're going to do I our... don't want to have to think what oh, goes in next. You need me to beat up a few eggs. Yes. Because we're going to have... There's egg in here, which is nice. We're going like... to make an egg crepe, which is fun to do. And it's a nice way to add protein to this recipe. Eggs are really... Okay. One egg is only like 77 calories max. Um, so why not? Okay, so you, let's get... What goes in first? It's going to be the egg. I'm going to add my two teaspoons of oil. So I'm going to start testing the temperature of the wok with the water. Mm -hmm. There. This is what we want. Okay. Here comes the egg. Okay. Make sure it's all evaporated because otherwise it's going to spatter back at you. Swirl the oil around so it's nicely coated. And then we can just pour that in. Oh, that's so pretty. Yep. And so just let it cook for about... 10 seconds until it starts to form the pancake. Mm -hmm. And then I just sort of tilt it to make sure that raw egg runs around. It's funny, that's how my mom taught me to make an omelet. Really? Well, not in a wok, <laughs> <laughs> but to tilt the, the wet right. stuff. And you can actually like lift it a little bit and let it slide under. She taught me that too. Really? Yeah. Maybe your mother had a Chinese soul. <laughs> Maybe she did. So at this point now, I would flip it. There you go. 
We got it. Ah. Ooh. Oh, there wow, that's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? So you want a little color on it? Yes. And just for about five seconds, we can turn off the heat. And now I'm just going to flip it over here okay. to cool. And as you can see, there's no sticking in my wok. That is amazing. Because this is a natural non-stick surface. Right, without the toxins. Isn't that beautiful? It's just beautiful. So okay. now I can just add my last, okay. my one more tablespoon of oil. Okay, here I'm we back go. back on high heat. Okay, so we've got two tables. So swirl it around the outside? Yes. That's perfect. Okay. And now the ginger and the red pepper flakes. And where do these go? Right in here. Just right in the middle? Yep. I'm a little scared of the red pepper flakes. I know we're going to be coughing. There we go. So your walk is always talking to you. Yes. All right. If you don't hear a sizzle sound, it means that you didn't preheat your wok enough. And, and if that happens, get the ingredients out and start over again? Yes, I would. Because you can't bring it back. Now, mushrooms are like eggplant. They absorb the oil immediately. I was going to say, it suddenly got very dry. Yes. So we can swirl in the vegetable broth. Okay, so around the edge again? Yes. And this is a great, beautiful, this is a great low-fat cooking technique because they because mushrooms absorb so much oil. Ordinarily, we could add two, three, four tablespoons and of oil. And they just suck it right up, just like eggplant, as you said. And I don't want that much fat. Mm -hmm. So here we have a little bit of oil, mm -hmm. but that broth is just going to finish cooking the mushrooms. And you're just going to stir fry this until all the liquid is just about absorbed. You know, I'm going to cut up this egg. Oh, you perfect. want this in strips, correct? Thank you. Yes. Oops. Do this first, and then I'll go like this. Perfect. It's fun cutting up a little omelet yeah. like this. So it's almost evaporated now. We could actually swirl in that last tablespoon of oil. Okay. And then add the rice and scallions. Okay. Do you add the rice in any particular way? No. And this is why you want to fluff the rice the day before. Otherwise, going. this would be in complete clumps. It would be a hard block. What do you do if you've screwed up or somebody else has ruined your walk? You, how do you fix it? You just do the famous Grace Young walk facial. You wash the walk. You um, heat it on the stove, as I showed you, until the water evaporates. Then you add maybe a tablespoon of salt and half as much oil off the heat. Take a um, thick paper towel pad and buff it with the salt and oil, and it will come back. That's interesting about the kosher salt, because I use that on my, my cast iron grill pan yeah. to get the crusty stuff off. So this, you're, we're just stir frying this until the brown rice is heated through because it's already cooked. And this is the beauty of the wok. In a skillet, because it doesn't have the high sides, all this food would be on your stovetop. Right, it would just come out the sides. So now off the heat, we can add the soy sauce of pine nuts. I'm going to add And the anywhere? Egg. Anywhere. No. Okay, the pine nuts. And how did we toast these? You can toast them in the wok. Okay. I actually dry prefer, wok. Yes, dry wok. Salt and pepper? Yes, okay. just sprinkle it in. And you're using white pepper. Can you explain to me why white pepper? The Chinese often use white pepper. They don't like black specks in their food. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. That's the same reason the French use really? white pepper for white things and black pepper for everything else. I think it's actually more fragrant. One last question as you, yes. as you uh, go ahead, you can um, serve us. I love it, you're serving us. Yes. I have, have to cook at times on a glass top stove that's electric. What do I do with a wok? You want exactly the same wok that I'm using with the flat, flat bottom. bottom. And yeah. this would work on, let's say you have one of those antiquated electric coil, same flat thing. Flat bottom. Okay, this mm. is so exciting. We've got wow. a nice mizuna and uh, radish salad here. This is beautiful. Oh, very, let's, we're gonna head on over and uh, taste our yummy dishes. Okay, this looks fantastic. Yeah. I picked a Riesling, I hope that's okay, because I thought since the Burmese chili chicken is a little bit spicy, it's always nice to have a fruity wine to sort of count the sugar in the wine to counterbalance that. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you, sir. I'm Sarah Moulton, I'll see you next time for more of Sarah's Weekday Meals. Now we must eat. Yeah. Mm, okay, mm, this is really good. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Thank you so much, Sarah.
Sarah's Weeknight Meals continues online. For recipes, helpful tips, messages, and lots more, visit us on the web at sarahmolton.com forward slash weeknight meals. Funding provided by... Subaru builds vehicles like the versatile Subaru Forester with symmetrical all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo room. A recipe made for whatever the day brings. Subaru, a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Family owned and Indiana grown, Maple Leaf Farms is a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Providing a variety of duck products for home kitchens, Maple Leaf Farms Duck helps inspire culinary adventures everywhere. Maple Leaf Farms. Ezra's Feta Cheese, family made for more than a century.